Good morning. <laughs> Here we go again. He still can't do it. Good morning, One guys day. and girls. Anthony from Braintree Motormouth. Joined again today by my resident DJ. Oh, well, it's better Paul. than your left hand lady or whatever you used to call me. Paul Goddard. Hello, everybody. And my guest today. So it's our first guest on the show. Good friend. Um, it's what? <laughs> good friend. <laughs> good friend. Uh, now it. Now you Soon are. to be. Soon to be a good friend. And our guest today is the CEO of MCE Insurance, the UK's world's number one. UK's world's number one. UK world's Woo! number one motorbike insurance. Julian Edwards. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Anthony. Well, I'm a bit surprised because yesterday afternoon I was quietly minding my own business, as you do, and I thought today I was on uh, hotboxing with Mike Tyson. (laughs) And then my LinkedIn started going bananas, and I thought, what's going on here? So I click on it, and you've mentioned my name, and suddenly I've got all these people wanting to be friends with me. So you are a seriously influential dude. (laughs) Have I raised your profile? Yeah, you have. (laughs) That is mental. You can come again. Imagine Forget about Mike Tyson (laughs) and his hotboxing. I mean, I can pretend to be Mike Tyson. Go on then. Well, hello, Julian. Thank you for coming on boxing today. (laughs) What? No. I think that's good. I thought that was quite good. No, awful. Welcome to my hotbox. Oh, he's going to kill me now, isn't he? Yeah, he is. I reckon you could take him. <laughs> well, he's coming in next. <laughs> you, Imagine that, he turns up with his tiger. Just just comes in. <laughs> he's um, a mad bastard. His mushrooms. He's a mad, he's <laughs> mad. <laughs> but today, we're, we're here to speak to um, Julian. He's, he's probably the only insurance company who uh, is actually arranged to meet me. Um, if not, I'm actually on the blacklist on most insurance companies. Um, so we're down, we're down today to... Um, speak to Julian about his journey and um, where he started and, um, and where he is now. And to be fair, like I said at the time, I, just reading his bio on LinkedIn just blew me away. Like I said under my message, it, it's made me want to go back to school and listen so I can actually become something. You still wouldn't um, listen. No, I wouldn't. You're right. <laughs> I, spent most, I spent most of my time outside <laughs> looking in. What, the classroom? Yeah, because yeah, so. I always got sent out. Yeah. But you're very well, so you're obviously university... I, I was going to say university trained. University <laughs> educated. <laughs> educated, that's yeah. it. Trained. You speak very well as well, yeah, don't you? I yeah, like his yeah. voice. Thank you. I don't know if it's made up. It made up. <laughs> Is it? I thought we were in a, in a, in a bubble of trust. <laughs> we are in a bubble of trust. You know, you just spent the last 10 minutes <laughs> telling me that when you meet someone, you just automatically trust them. <laughs> what, I a, do. what a load of bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> I do trust you 100%. We, we were speaking earlier, because we've been talking about this while Paul sets up, because he's not really got the hang of it yet. So he takes about half hour. So... Um, we've been talking about where Julian came from and um, where he is now. And um, with the insurance side, uh, Julian, he's, he's just unbelievable. You've gone from a broker yep. to an insurer. Mm. So for me, that's it's an outstanding achievement anyway. But it's, it's to, to our listeners, what, what's the, what was the biggest thing to change you from broker to insurer? Well, I suppose in the uh, in the late 90s and the noughties, our model was all about cross-selling. So we would insure someone's motorcycle, and then from there, we would cross-sell to them different products. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was really successful for us, and we created a company doing credit hire, credit, uh, credit storage, uh, a marketing company, a company doing um uh, motorsport insurance yeah. and that was all off the back of our uh, off the back of our motor insurance and then we got to a point and we said look we've got all of the disciplines and the skill sets here to be able to take our model one step further and create an insurance company crazy, and it happened yeah. just like that yeah in about 10 seconds <laughs> <laughs> so uh we're just like right one, one one wednesday <laughs> afternoon yeah okay we've got the credit higher up and running now let's go and create an insurance company that is mental what which happened that quick though yeah making the decision happen that quickly i was now, gonna say not turning into an insurance no, company to create the quick. insurance company you know to get our, our authorization yeah was a three and a half year timeline was it yeah three and a half year timeline Long with God. some really difficult parts on the journey where you think it's just not going to happen yeah 
And three and a half years to stay energised and focused on something. I can't even wait know. three and a half hours, can I? Yeah. No. I am the world's worst. Like, yeah. I literally, he does a podcast, we'll record this and I go, right, when, when can we go live? When can we <laughs> right. go live? Did I? Yeah. Three and a half years. Did you ever feel like giving up at that time? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we thought it was going to be about a 12-month onboarding process. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, because obviously we had the capitalization sorted out, we had our products, we had our business plan. Um, but essentially, we were trying, we were creating a public interest entity. Right. It is what it says, it's in the public interest. Yeah. Um, so, of course, it takes takes a lot longer to. You had to get the money from underneath your mattress to, <laughs> to put it. in the, Yeah, exactly. Uh, that took a Give few, it to the Italians, then people. get it back again. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. <laughs> So, um, so how long have you been in an insurance company? An actual insurance company? 2012. So, so you know, we're coming up to 10 years. 10 years. Yeah, you said Excellent. you were good at maths. I, I was very I good at I looked at your face you there. I, I wasn't, wasn't going to help you out. <laughs> I'm glad we got visual because I was about to do 2014, <laughs> yeah. 2014. I'm not, I'm not the cleverest I was going to get your abacus out. For you. <laughs> and, and, and what a sort of, you know, coming up to 10 years that's been. I mean, the world's just changed in that period of time. I bet even the last but, year. Like, yeah. The last year must have been madness for you as well. Well, we created the insurance company in an analogue environment. Yeah. You know, it was about people. Yeah. It was about slow processes. <laughs> And, you know, that suited that. us. It suited all the insurance companies. Yeah. It was a safe haven. Yeah. And then I think how quickly it's changed over the last three or four years. And, uh, you know, nobody operates in the same way. No. And, I, and you were saying the biggest thing about you going forward is, um, I don't even know how you would say, it, is turning your claims process into a, what would you, how would you say it? Yeah, so digital transformation. Right. Uh, you know, which sounds... Told you it was clever. <laughs> <laughs> Told you it was clever. Is that, <laughs> is that impressed? Yeah, I'm blown away by you every five minutes. Oh, right, okay. What are we talking about? Digital so, transformation. Yeah. So we took all of our... It sounds simple. If we were creating a new company, of course, you build it all in a digital world. Yeah. You don't put any analogue or human processes into place. But we're taking, you know, a legacy business that was based on people that yeah. you can date back to 1975 yeah. and, you know, make it fit for purpose in this environment. That's a huge job to do. Um, so first of all, you know, it's, we spent eight years working on claims, just putting our infrastructure together. So that took us um, up to... Well, you've got me going on the map. Yeah, no, now. eight years. So eight, eight years, that'll take us up to today. It's not, it's, it took us up to 2018, to so it's six we, years. Just to say why we're here as well, um, Julian's got a lovely office. It's a really oh, nice yes. office in here. It's um, state of the art. Um, who says insurance doesn't pay? Now carry on, Julian. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't take us eight years at all. It took us six years. Six years. <laughs> so now we've got that one all time. So you've nailed your claims process now. <laughs> nailed our claims process down to a certain degree. And then we put our attention into uh, policy. So in terms of what we can do for our customers. And we completed our digital transformation, which is creating a frictionless world for our customers. Yeah. So the vision is that all transactions um, are operated through technology. Through Which that. is really weird because we were talking before, I'm the complete opposite. Like I, as I was saying to Julian, I used to ring my bank every day and speak to a person and for two or three years, she used to say to me, um, you do know you've got internet banking. And I hated it because I didn't want to lose that customer interaction. But like you said, I do it, I do it now. Yeah. We're all... Converted. Always. Everyone's self-taught in this, you know, for us moving to this environment. Do you not think, though, people on the f end of a phone is a good thing? Okay, Google, how many people like waiting for a phone to be answered from no, an insurance company? No, I get that. Uh, or I is this going to be some little funny twist that you enjoy doing? No, no, it's, it's really weird because I do like the whole oh, music. Because, yeah. you know, <laughs> no, you do you know dun, dun, if you're dun, waiting dun, for more dun. than two seconds, ah. Oh, Slam in the phone. Take a picture. They just don't LinkedIn. answer. They just don't answer. I'll go back to a further part of my career. Yeah. You know, when I was sort of like 18, 19 years old, working in a branch office, August. Yeah. Factory Fortnite comes along. 30 people. What is Factory Fortnite? Factories used to close down for two weeks. Did they? Yeah. You never knew that. Did you not know that? Oh, yeah. oh. Anyway, so what Factory do you do on the Fortnite. Factory yeah. Fortnite? So what do you do on your first day of holiday? You queue up to buy your insurance. I can't answer why. <laughs> they thought that was a good idea. But that's what happened. That was actually and I'll thing. turn never up, you know, so, as a 19-year-old. There'd be 30 people. Are you joking? Queuing, no, that's me. To get their insurance. Queuing but outside, yeah. Well and then up. they would come in, you get a quote, well and then they'd walk to the next office, you want to get have a cigarette at the counter, 
Unbelievable. Uh, but they had to go. And then they went onto the phone and. So, so, so what you're trying to build is obviously a, a and you've still got staff because we were saying, like anything, is you, in te- Tesco's where they've got the checkout, you've still got the other ones, haven't you, where people are working there? Yeah. And I've had this debate on LinkedIn loads of time because I hate doing self checkout. Because without sounding rude, if I wanted to work at Morrison, I'd go and work there. I feel like I'm not getting paid to do my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. but you're well, you like a chat. Yeah, I'd love it. <laughs> but then I, I um, would always go straight. Would you go self checkout every time? Well, because you steal. You try and put the thing because they measure that now. So be careful. I'm helping them. <laughs> I mean, they have to throw away so many. Have you many ever tried to get? Now. Come on, let's be honest here. Have you ever tried to get a bit in the basket oh, without? I've run a public interest entity. Oh yeah, nor do I. <laughs> nor do I. Listeners, I've never tried to do that. I don't even know that. where you're going with this. I don't even know what you're on about. <laughs> but what Julian was saying is, every time um, they make something more digital, but staff still stay but in a different I think that's the fear in any business when they can see an organization transferring from yeah. digital are there going to be any are there going to be any job loss? yeah of course it's going to be jobs yeah. they're going to be different jobs yeah and an evolution of skills yeah that people could then migrate into you know different stages of their careers yeah um, and like you so said, we've got over that sort of the, you know, the that fear factor yeah the fear yeah. factor yeah. so on I, I'm not being and able... ultimately if we don't go through this digital transformation the jobs wouldn't be at MC anyway no because no, you just that. can't survive and, and no, you would just thought you would fall behind yeah. wouldn't you yeah, yeah. and that's the thing with that. you you're very forward so do you you do all this yourself as well didn't you yeah we do yeah our, well, whole, that's bi- crazy. our whole business has been about organic growth understanding everything from a granular level now, I know, you know, within this organisation, which is complex, an insurance yeah. company yeah. is complex. I know exactly who to go to in my business who's the subject matter expert. That's excellent. So, a couple of things what I want to ask you. The comparison, your your main source of business now. 100% of our inquiries. 100%. 100% of our inquiries. Is comparison. Price, comparison so, if Mr and Mrs Jones don't, under, don't understand comparison, I go on, I click some buttons, it comes up with five different people to insure, right? So how does that work? Do you have to pay, do you have to pay to be on there? Yeah, uh, no, we don't have to pay to be on there. What we do is we pay every time someone insures right. with us through the price comparison site. And how, so surely, we, like say you, Paul, if you looked on, don't mm. everyone click on the top one or the cheapest? One, do two you, and three. I was going to say, you know, the top one's three. got the concentration risk, 80%, then the yeah. scraps are between two and three. If you're outside the top three, you're not going to no, rise it pretty much. Is that what it is? That's what I, yeah. yeah it's, it's a price comparison site. Yeah. And when someone's buying their, you know, insurance for their for their personal good, they want the yeah. cheapest price. Do you, do you think everyone wants the cheapest price? Look, the vast majority of people yeah. absolutely do, which yeah. is why they've been such a huge success. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. Personally, like you say, I would look at the top three or You definitely want the four. fucking cheapest. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've seen your lunch. And my pay packet. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, no, I would look at the top one, obviously, is the first one that comes up. You look at that and you go, oh, that's a good price. Yeah. But personally, I would then look at the next two or three just to see, because if that top one's like, some company I've never heard of. Do you go by name as well? Do you yeah, think MCE yeah. name, if that was in the mix, so where, where are you normally on so the that's, price? That's really interesting. On the motorcycle side, yeah. absolutely, brand plays an important part yeah. for so MCE. So going back to, you used to be the head sponsor of the Superbike. I'm not say, a biker at all. You're huge in the, mo- you've, got to, you've got to be well, the biggest. L- 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 let's get it right. Yeah, the we are. MCE the, insurance British Superbike. Yes. Exactly, exactly. So uh, Julian had 10 years um, of amazing times. With grid girls. Amazing. No, not with grid girls. We can't say that, can we? Um, (laughs) But on on that then, so on a price comparison, would you go RMC, so a motorbike, I'm I'm, sorry, I'm rambling on here. On motorbikes, you'd be the name that everyone knew. Got to be. Right, cool. I don't understand that because I'm not not a I'm not a motorcycle owner. Yeah, but but you like men in leather, don't you? I do. Right, um, but but honestly, <laughs> to do with I wouldn't even know of any other motorcycle insurers. So if which I was is perfect, per- which means you yeah, built your that's, brand. That's perfect. the thing. Yeah. And what about car then? Well, that's interesting. So you know, we do uh, underwrite car business and van business where we don't have a big brand. Yeah. Yet we still underwrite the insurance. People still buy from us. Yeah. Because our price and our products, right? Yeah. And it shows. It shows there's such confidence from consumers in insurance. Yeah. And the UK's financial industry uh financial services industry that yeah. people can buy on price and absolutely demand the right service and the right product and if an insurance company crashes that's the worst environment that can happen yeah of course customers are still protected by the policyholders protection board yeah and you get paid out you know the yeah. uh, the lion's share of your claim 
So, so why not buy on price? No, I, I get that. I do get that. And I, I, my argument in my industry with uh, Max and Repairs is loads of insurance companies say to me, well, the customer buys on price, so why shouldn't we repair on price? Yeah. So in our industry, they the whole point of um, commercial decisions is insurance companies sign up with body shops who will work to their rates. Yeah. We don't. And one of the arguments is always, well, the customers search around for the best price. Why can't we? Yeah. My argument is, do you get the best service from the cheapest people? But then, like you say, for insurance, you'd still say that you give out a great service and you're not yeah, the dearest people. Yeah, you, 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 you have to. You know, it's you such a mature market. You yeah. know, we, we're, we're regulated in that yeah. way. If we don't the get it right, as well. it's so expensive. Yeah, reviews are important. Yeah. Yeah. So I, mean, so, so I understand on, on that side of you. So I have the argument that, obviously, approved repairers, I'm not saying that they don't do the job with us, but the, 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 the money in being approved is so minimal. We were talking about fraud, weren't we? Mm. Like what's the, you've got, you know the stats in your industry. What's the fraud, fraudulent or Oh, one point two Oh, £1.2 million pounds a year. With detected. Some stack, detected, yes. Yeah, so it's at three, four oh. times the side of that. What's known about is... Uh, 700,000 incidents a year. In, fr in fraud? A year in Just fraud. Just in insurance? That is detected. Yeah, but that's in any insurance, is it? That's that's uh, personal insurance. Yeah, of course, cool. so personal insurance. Personal right. insurance, which the line share And that could be anything. What, someone, um, cash for crash? Or yeah, it could be anything. anything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, had, yeah. A, had a flood at home? There's no fraudulent activity with my claim. <laughs> Julian's on know. his fourth blood exactly. claim. Uh, um, we're scared about the equipment in here. Yeah, in case yeah look, the profile of people committing fraud, uh, two ends of the spectrum, organised gangs, yeah. really sophisticated models mm -hmm. that can extract millions of pounds from a single insurer when they spot a weakness. That's crazy. And they're so good and they it? hammer and they hammer and they hammer that insurer yeah. and you can find out about when it's too late. Yeah. Because that is their, that's their job as a fraudster. Yeah, of course, yeah. To trick you. Yeah. So from those organised uh, uh, gangs down to a priest. Yeah. So you try and profile who is Who's, committing yeah, fraud. Cool. Yeah. It's everywhere. So back to my normal question. So insurers are not having it off. Insurers are not having it off. Uh, we sit in one of the nicest offices I've ever been with. But insurers ain't having it off. I get that. I my my thing with insurance is, Mister and Missus Jones. We all look at our policies, right? And we go, oh, it's eight hundred quid for an Audi for a year. Why are insurance charging me eight hundred quid? And you were saying on bike, because it averaging two hundred, is it? Average premiums, a couple. Average hundred premium, pounds, yeah. a couple hundred pound for a bike. Julian was telling us, which we don't even think about. If you look at that person, what a motorbike guy who's had a crash and lost his leg. Yeah. You have now got to deal with that for the rest of his life. Yeah. So it, it, insurance does play a really important part in society and you know global economics. You know, um, the UK couldn't function without a vibrant. Uh, insurance industry. Yeah. It's just impossible. Which no one, we, we didn't think of that, did we? Well, you, you, you don't you do think, it, you, don't. you know about it, but you obviously don't actually think about it, do you? Yeah. It's the biggest distributor of wealth globally, insurance is. Crazy. It underpins every pension fund. It underpins every Which fabric is, it, of society. When you, when you hear it, you think, oh, well, that obviously, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it makes of course sense. it does. Yeah. Yeah. Just and for fraudulent claims, you know, um, we say £50 is added onto every premium yeah. for fraudulent claims. They're the ones that are known about. Yeah. So on that, though, I always say, and we were talking earlier again, I always think it's weird because us as Mr. and Mrs. Jones, and I always talk about me being a, a normal person as well, even though I'm not normal, but we look at it as every year we're getting told our policy's going up for, um, there's been floods this year, weirdly enough, <laughs> been floods with Julian, or there's been stolen vehicles, or there's been like, um, there's always something that puts the premium, that's in our minds. Yeah. So with insurers, how do we get around that stigma of insurance just putting people's policies up. Oh, Are you ever going to get around I, that? I, I, I don't, don't think you're can, ever going to get you? around that. Insurance companies do a phenomenal job. They yeah. do when it really matters. Yeah. Insurance companies do a phenomenal job. And uh, look, we're in the business of long tail liability claims, yeah. which uh, is bad. Duty when, of care. So if a miner's injured by one yeah. of our policyholders, we will look after that individual for the entirety of their life, and we fully expect them with with you know the. With, with the great medical care that is now being able to provide it, that that person should live a full yeah. life expectancy. And that's mad because you're looking at that. If that did happen, God forbid, that was a £200 policy. 
£200 policy that we are and you've now duty got to look bound after that person absolutely for the rest of their life. correct. 70 years. How do you stay in business then? If that's the case, £200 policy, the the flip side of that could be what? what do you know what your biggest claim paid out ever was? Or not? Yeah, I do. We're over £20 million on a claim. You're joking. No. And that was probably a £200 policy? That was undoubtedly a two hundred pound policy. Yeah, that's mad. Yeah, I mean, it might it? be four hundred. You don't pounds, think that, you, and, yeah. and everyone thinks I'm yeah. against insurance companies. I'll go on record always to say I'm not against insurance companies at all. I'm against insurance companies doing wrong things, and that's the same as what I would be in body shops. Yeah. Body shops who commit fraud, I'm against them. But people say when they hear about a twenty million pound claim, they're just like, "Whoa, that's a lot of money." Yeah, and 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 but no one thinks about the individual. It's £20 no. million pounds for a reason. Yeah. It's going to require that level of specialist care, plus solicitors. Yeah, of course. <laughs> they have their care. Well, so, so yeah. 19 million, well, and then 1 million to the car. This well, is, no, no, no. The, broadly, the way it works is that 40% would be on the damages to the individual. Really? Right. 60%, 60%, 60 to 60 percent. Let's not just give these solicitors a bad rep, because there's loads <laughs> of loads other of people out there, yeah. medical agencies, yeah. crash scene yeah. investigators. But, to be blah, fair, blah, blah, blah. but solicitors take a lion share of yeah. that. Let's the, face it. This is you're clever enough to be an solicitor, aren't you? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't oh. know how to take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, but that. this is sort of what we're trying to get at is the fact that there's it's not necessarily the insurance companies themselves that are damaging the, this industry it's for us. No, of course it's, not. It's the people in between taking their cuts when actually, if they just dealt with Middle us, men. Yeah. Middle men. And if they Middle just dealt with must. us direct yeah. and, and, and gave us what we feel is, is fair, then everyone could be a lot happier. The, for the us to settle a simple £5,000 yeah. know, uh, soft tissue claim, yeah. you know, we've got to pay 12 different suppliers. That's what I mean. Yeah, and that is a, that but can't is, we whittle that down? Then you down multiply industry, that up yeah. with the hundreds this of thousands it. of claims yeah, exactly. that we're dealing with. But can't you whittle that down somehow? And you, can't we get rid of middlemen? Uh, th there is a really important value chain in there. I was going to say, you need your medical legal of, companies, right. you need your repairers, yeah. you need your solicitors, yeah. uh, you need, your, you know, the NHS requires paying, Department of, uh, Department of Work and Pensions, yeah. uh, to name a few recovery operators. So on that it, then, it, it, it is a whole web. But, you're but that, that takes a claim from this figure to that figure. With but it's all, all very analogue. It's all very analog. You know, you've got the insurer, well, the customer and the insurer, the two yeah, pivotal that, points of it. Yeah. And then and you've then got other, all of these the organisations that are completely unrelated, all with their own, own processes. And, a, and agenda yeah. to make money. So, so what we're looking at is claims and saying claims has to be friction free. Yeah. You know, it has to be, uh, you know, when a customer wants to report a claim, it's got to be digitally reported. Yeah. And then it's got to feed into everybody else's you know, network for an API, the entire supply chain. It, and it, it would speed everything up. Yeah, it's really weird because we spend our whole time saying, don't bring insurers first. Yeah. <laughs> that is my tagline. Well, yeah, because we, first. as a repairer, as a repairer side, we, we want to, to deal with it first, and we want so to we, grab that and we've capture got, it. Yeah, but it's not to take the mic either. It's just to get no, what just we, to make sure that, that we can get the job. That first phone call is the most important thing in any And why do, why do customers want to phone you first? Because if you, if they, if we, we look after them. We make it easy for them. We hold their hand through. Because if you think, and this is going back to when I was at Town & Country, back in the day, they got rid of their FNOL and sent it to India, which are no problem. First notification of loss. First notification of loss. Not lost. It, the reason they'd done that was for money. Mm. They had to pay us double time in Ipswich for about six months to actually put right what was happening in India. And it was no blame to India. But what... Would you want to have a crash and try and explain to someone who couldn't speak a word of English back then... And explain your accident. Absolutely. They lost so much business um, because of but that. But then if you look at what people have to, you know, disclose oh, in a personal a notification of loss, yeah. you know, what a load of rubbish that yeah. is. You know, you Was can it take, sunny? You can take it down from 50, 60 questions yeah. into meaningful half a dozen. And that's really manageable. And that's what you're technology. doing with your technology. That's what we're doing in technology. I'm excited if your vehicle see. is damaged, whether yeah. it's a third party claim or whether it's a first party claim, it should be... The claim should be completed within 21 days. Yeah. Easily 21 yeah. days. And I think that's... But that's the problem. Too. When you've got middlemen yeah. all of, with their own agendas, yeah. this is where the claim goes to 40 to 60 yeah. days, isn't it? And of course, consumers don't really understand it. No, How many claims do you make in a life cycle? They reckon every eight years, don't they? Once every, yeah, once every eight years. Right, well, let's hope I don't have a flood next year. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be three in a year. Three in a year. <laughs> Moving on just to um, what is Big Ed? 
Big Ed is. Do you what know what? Big First Ed. of all, Big Ed, what? I know Big Ed. So he's Big Ed. knows Big Ed. He's, I don't. He's Big, Big Ed's Ed. the was champion that your, of champions. Was that yeah. your mask? Would you call it a mascot? mascot? Big Ed. Big Ed is MCE. MCE. Even I know that. Yeah, but I don't get it. He what? personifies all that we are. <laughs> no, but I don't you, know where I'm going if on you that. Ask, oh, where did you come up with that then? Or what was it? What was it? What is he? What, compa- what I don't do you mean. He was, what was he, it? He's he a was motorcycle creative. rider. Look at why are you both so it's angry. It's obvious what he is. He's a motorcycle rider. What is he an actual person? Yeah. No, he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. You have a look. You can you, you can watch him riding around the track. Do you, do you yeah, know yeah, who he is? Yeah, for real. No. Oh, yeah. is he you? No one's ever seen him without a helmet. I love that. Exactly. Is he? Was he the first Stig who ain't made it famous? <laughs> yeah. the Stig come in and made it more go. famous. If if the Stig was fun, <laughs> he's got a massive smile. But no, any, anyone smile. that's that's what, into, into motorbikes? motorbikes will know MTE and they will know who he is. Big Ed's had a lot of fun over the years. I mean, he enjoyed ten years at the yeah, MTE. Yeah, good kid. Oh, good girls. He enjoyed ten years. <laughs> Ed being was an on animal. the podium. He had Under that, that, he had that fling with Jordan, didn't he? Oh, you can't just <laughs> you can't just throw stuff yeah. out like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was Jody Marsh, but oh, was it? Oh, you know. sorry, sorry. Is that what? It, yeah. I don't even know what's happening here, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where we're going with being gobsmacked. I'm. I just don't know what is happening. I don't. I've never been into bikes, to be fair. So I don't. I don't know anything about it. But what I liked about um, you and and your brand when I see it is just for me. It's it, for an insurer to actually want to speak to someone who's asking either difficult questions or I just I want to break away from the norm because our industry is so like. It seems like it's us and them. There's distrust everywhere. There's distrust there. with it, you know. But you know, in, in, insurers, you know, we spend a fortune, not just in capital expense, but in terms of resource as well, mitigating fraud exposure yeah. from everywhere. And you've been very vocal about you yeah, know, fraud, your profession yeah. and the amount yeah. of fraud, and that is broadly undetected. Do you know? Do you know what gets me is I've been a, a um, an, an approved repairer. I've been a, a, a dealer approved. That means like a BMW or Mercedes, whatever. I've been a, a, um, an approved repairer. I've been a, a accident management company. I've actually seen all hands of it. And when I talk, I only ever talk the truth for what I've yeah. seen or heard. I would never ever make up that there's fraud if there isn't, because it doesn't get me in. Anywhere. No. It happens all day, every day. I've had insurance engineers say, Anthony, we can't police it. It's happening so much that we haven't got the, the resources to police it. It's impossible. So for me, though, my argument is we are pushing, I believe, insurers are pushing, I shouldn't say we, we are pushing, insurers are pushing, repairers to work for such low margins that they have to do one or two things, cut corners or commit fraud. And that's the problem is, why don't we look at paying a higher labour rate, but actually getting stuff done quicker? Credit repair must be a massive loss for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, the insurance, motor insurers in general, have done a really bad job of managing the supply chain, of managing customers' expectations, which is why this industry now is big. I mean, you know, if you look at the the medical side, medical agencies, that's an industry that's worth £250 million in its own right. It's crazy. And that's really fringe stuff. Yeah. You know, you look at more of the bread and butter, the the uh, what you credit hire and credit hire. We used to get um, an accident management company telling us to go over a weekend. And that's no good, because if that was against you, imagine that... Imagine how many body shops were. Oh, and it's multiplied up. Yeah. You know, this is a huge, huge profession. And this about. is why I say don't worry about the labour rate. Right? Worry about getting jobs done quicker, making sure we're charging for the right things. But Anthony, um, I think it's only there because of the incompetence of the insurance companies yeah. of being able to get that claim and manage it and meet the expectations. Yeah. Customers would much prefer that. Yeah, of course. One source well, with the paymaster. Yeah. But they don't. They're forced out to yeah. use... You know, a whole load of different cottage industries. And this is why we say with credit repair, they wouldn't be about if insurers knew how to deal. Well, probably they do now, but dealt with it properly at the time. I don't think insurers are nearly as uh, at at the level that they should be. Yeah. They've got to invest in their digital strategies. They've got to invest in their communication with their clients, third parties, and also the supply network as well. Got to get it nailed. Otherwise, it's just going to continue to, you know... Or even provoke fraudulent activity. 100%. And fraudulent activity can come in so many dis- different guises. It can just be exaggerated claims. Yeah. But those exaggerated claims 
are costing us cool. about three and yeah. a half oh, million pounds cost. a day. It's, it's Not MCE, but costing motor insurance yeah. three and a half million pounds Well, I remember, again, going back to BMW, I remember a lady came in and it was, I was, I was it came in and got hit up the backside. <laughs> And she pointed at the bonnet and went, I want that done at the same time as well. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, well, last time I had a claim, they done the re all my car and I got, I got five grand in it and ended up doing my kitchen up. And I like looked at her at that time and I thought, you're the sort of person who's ruining this industry. Mm. Why are we doing the front of your car? Because someone's hit you up the backside. Mm. But the thing is, there's body shops who would do that. Yeah. And there are people who are in, involved in it who want to make the repair go over. Like we just, I just want a fair run. And because of that, because of that incident that you're talking about there, yeah. specifically that one, yeah. Mabel, 86 years old, yeah. waiting for That's a pension, got less money. Yes. <laughs> That's yeah. the serious she side of it. It's not a victimless crime. Think <laughs> of Mabel. <laughs> Hello, my dears. Yeah. <laughs> Mabel, weirdly enough, is my nan's name. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. And she's she never told me. No, she's not. Oh, don't <laughs> say that about my nan. Right. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna end this on. Well, tell us, um, Julian, what's your next goal? What's your next? Where do you want to be in twelve months? Yeah. So we're completing uh, uh, putting the customer at the heart of what we do. Uh, digital transformation on the policy side to the buying of the insurance. That's almost complete. Then we want to move all of our resource and attention to uh, claims to first of all make the first party claims journey completely digitized yeah so someone can complete their claim within 21 days wipe their hand and get on with their lives Perfect. and then move into third party claims from there excellent so uh, if you have a motorbike go and look at mce or buy one buy one just go Two and buy one. or three yeah, yeah. Go and buy some more motorbikes. <laughs> I've negotiated a nice little commission, so <laughs> if anyone could insure with MCE, use the code word Anthony, not hairband, Anthony. When you was Ed under the helmet, did you I, wear... I wasn't Ed under the oh, helmet. Oh, you wasn't. What's that? You... <laughs> Big Ed. Wow. Big Ed. There's, yeah. there's rumours. There's yeah, rumours. Did you uh, did you have your Come hairband on there? Jodie Marsh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, she signed to... an NDA. <laughs> <laughs> you can't imagine that. Um, yeah. So today, Julian, thank you ever so much for, for seeing us. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the content. Um, Paul will get editing to make it a bit more interesting. <laughs> Try um, to. Well, no, I think well, it was really interesting for no, us. It was interesting for us. And let's just say the whole podcast for me is to learn more things. I now don't believe that insurance companies are having it. That's a lie, I do still. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't built the trust yet. <laughs> oh, the pain. <laughs> but no, it's, um, it's one of, we were just talking about reviews as well, just quickly before I do shut down, is Julie was the saying, insurance companies care. They, yeah. they, they absolutely care. MCE and most other insurers are striving every day to try and get it better and get it right. And I truly believe that for customers, regulators, business partners, everyone, we, we do want to get it right. Yeah. It's just you're such a big entity, to be fair. Just it? not good it, enough in a few er in, in yeah. quite a few areas. And it's like days. us; we do that. We oh, are such a yeah. small company yeah. that if we were getting it wrong, you'd yeah. be you'd want to get shot, wouldn't you? Because if we are so small, we should be nailing what we do, yeah. and that's why we do. That's why so many people in the UK use us is because we do hold their hands. You're talking about transferring to, to digital. I'm the worst person in the world to to become digital. Um, I like holding people's hands and skipping um, all the way through a claim, so it feels like they're they're being looked after. And, it's, and that's how we do a lot of business, isn't it? And, so. it? and it comes across from yourself that that is how you try to run yours, your yeah. business. So I think that's great. I love it. It's been, it's been such an interesting no. few hours for us. Um, it's nice, again, that Julian's um, had the balls to meet us. And again, I'm not here to trip up insurers. I never, I never am. You guys are, are what make the industry. And we want to um, learn more. We want to learn more, We want to yeah. work with you. That's what we're trying to say. Work with us. Mm. We'll right, work mate. with you. It sounds like you're going to cry again. <laughs> And you can do this every and month. Hopefully. You get me emotional. We can do this together. Just because he knows Big Ed. You can meet him. We'll set up a day where you meet Big really? Ed. 
Yeah, I'd like that. No, but thank you for inviting. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. No, thank, thank you, you very much. Really enjoyed meeting no, you guys. Brilliant. Thanks for your time, and I will speak to you soon. Yep. Thank you, guys. Peace out. Hi guys, Paul here. Just a reminder that this week is your chance to win a brand new PS5, courtesy of Braintree Motorworks. If you want to be in with a chance of winning, please follow these simple steps. Follow us on Instagram, tag a friend, like and share to your story, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and listen out for the word hairband in today's podcast. If you think you know when you heard it, then please text your name and the exact time you heard it to 077 38 Good luck, you've got until 12pm on the 23rd of April.